Let me tell you a story. When I first got into lifting, people always told me, make sure you build good technique first. It'll prevent injuries and it'll speed up your progress. While the jury is still out as to whether good technique actually prevents injury, new evidence suggests that technique may not be as important as we once thought for muscle growth. Now real serious sports science Dr. Milo Wolf here with you today, courtesy of Wolf Coaching, and we're talking about a new paper, specifically a new paper I helped write. This paper is on the effects of technique during resistance training on hypertrophy, breaking down how much evidence do we actually have for technique meaningfully impacting how much muscle growth we actually see. The first real mentions of exercise technique as it pertains to lifting weights mostly pertains to machines and their instructions, and textbooks. While both of these often allude to proper technique is really important for maximizing muscle growth, it's really unclear what proper actually means. And oftentimes when you look into how these standards are actually established, there's not really any evidence behind them. And this isn't what you'd think if you looked at social media. If you looked at social media, you'd think, oh, a lot of people know a lot of stuff about technique. There's a lot of evidence out there about what technique works better. The reality is when you hear an influencer say, for sure, this technique will lead to more hypertrophy than this one, there's going to be some degree of inference or sometimes there's just no evidence behind it to speak of. However, there are a few things we have evidence for. Before we go into that, let's quickly define technique as we did in our paper. Reading it off my phone here because I definitely could not remember all five lines of this off by heart. Resistance training exercise technique pertains to the controlled execution of bodily movements to ensure an exercise effectively targets specific muscle groups while minimizing the risk of injury. This involves the orchestration of body positioning and alignment, range of motion, and repetition tempo. Now, that's a lot of words, and let me break down what we actually have evidence for. First, range of motion. Range of motion is one of the few components of technique that we actually have direct evidence for. It seems like, broadly speaking, more length in training leads to more muscle growth than more shortened training. So, when you're lifting, use a range of motion that emphasizes long muscle lengths. Length and partials, as I've discussed in this video here, are just really one way of accomplishing this. Importantly, even with range of motion, there is still some degree of uncertainty regarding exactly how it works. Does it work within the context of a whole program, for example? Does it apply to everyone? Does it apply to beginners and advanced people alike? Does it apply to all muscle groups? Those sort of questions still remain. However, range of motion is probably the most, however, as far as technique goes, range of motion is probably the most researched aspect. Next up, less researched, we have tempo. Although there is some evidence that you want to keep repetition duration between two and eight seconds, there's not a whole lot of clarity beyond that. Purposely extending the concentric phase or purposely extending the eccentric phase, so making those longer, doesn't necessarily seem to be better for hypertrophy. You do still want some control on the eccentric, but whether a five second eccentric is better than a two second eccentric, at this point, we just don't have the evidence to support that claim. So as long as you have some control on the eccentric and your repetitions typically last two to eight seconds, as far as technique goes, you're kind of doing everything you can from the science perspective. And finally, we have kinematics. Kinematics is a pretty complex field because it encompasses a lot of things at once. You know, like, do you have a wider stance? Do you have a narrower stance? Do you have a higher foot placement on a leg press, slower foot placement? The truth is we just don't have any longitudinal evidence and actually measuring hypertrophy to see does one foot placement lead to more hypertrophy in the quads, for example. And so a lot of it comes down to individualize. It probably doesn't matter a ton. There's a good chance it doesn't. Just make sure that you have your big rocks in place, the things that have actually been studied. And that's kind of all you can do. The one thing I will say about kinematics is make sure your exercise is reasonably stable. If an exercise is super unstable, it's probably not ideal for growth. So, for example, during the squat and deadlift, make sure the bar stays around your midfoot, right? It should be over your midfoot at most times. That way, you will retain stability and hopefully be able to push close to failure without sort of falling over or anything like that. The same goes for lunges or split squats, for example. Again, though, we really don't have any evidence with kinematics. So a lot of this is just speculation. And if I'm speculating right now, just think about how some of your favorite influencers are speculating when they make certain claims on social media. Truth is, there's just no evidence for a lot of those claims. So let me give you some takeaways. Technique is a huge buzzword. If you go to different influences, they'll all preach good technique and they'll all preach different variations of good technique. If you actually look at how good technique and proper technique was first thought of, it's kind of arbitrary, right? Like for example, the idea that you need to keep a straight back the whole time during all movements and that not straight is bad, to an extent, that is based off aesthetics and people just liking symmetry and straight lines and that sort of stuff. 
So a lot of it isn't really evidence-based, right? Like even the evidence around injury risk with lumbar flexion just isn't really there. So with technique, there are a few things you probably want to keep in mind, but just remember there's not a ton of evidence in any of these fields yet. One is range of motion. Make sure you emphasize that lengthened position. For example, by lengthened partials. Two, with tempo, try and have repetitions last between two and eight seconds. As long as you're somewhere in that ballpark, you'll likely see the same hypertrophy. Make sure you have some control over the eccentric phase. You shouldn't just be letting the weight drop altogether, but you shouldn't necessarily have to extend the eccentric phase to be four or five seconds versus just one second. That's totally fine. Finally, as far as kinematics go, don't feel the need to adhere to what your favorite influencer has prescribed you. As long as it feels comfortable and satisfies the criteria of range of motion and tempo, you're probably doing just fine. That's the video. If you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, subscribe. I'm actually trying to upgrade the equipment that we're using for filming here so that I can give you guys better videos. So please, if you aren't subscribed already, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys, my subscribers, hopefully now more of you, in the next one. Peace. Thank you.